Okay, host Margarita Cardenas with you once again for another segment of Urban Traditions. And today we have back with us Nancy Davis, the caretaker of Shell Dance Orchids. Actually, it's a nursery uh, and it's off Highway 1. Um, last time we showcased orchids, but this time we went back to showcase bromeliads. Well, hi, Nancy. Welcome back. Well, I'm delighted to be here, Margarita. Oh, it's nice to have you back. And uh, please um, tell us again mm -hmm. about uh, your collaboration with Golden Gate Parks. Oh, we, Shell Dance Gardens, uh, located in Pacifica, are park partners because the property that our nursery is on is also a Golden Gate National Recreation Area. And so we've had a, a really good relationship with the National Park Service and we're also park stewards. So whenever anyone comes to our greenhouses, which were built in 1949, and right now they're doing a study to see if we qualify for historic landmark status. I'm very excited about that, really excited. So, Exciting, yes. yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, yes. 1949, those greenhouses wow. were built and have been in uh, exotic plant production, orchids, bromeliads, from the day one. So a very long tradition of growing plants on the coast. Well, I must say that bromeliads are such an exotic and very uh, rare plant. Well, I don't know if they're rare, but to me they were rare mm -hmm. because um, they require little soil mm -hmm. nor to be potted. Mm -hmm. um, and um, tell us, Nancy, now, is Academy of, of Science, uh -huh. do you propagate solely bromeliads for them? Yes. Uh, well, we might be able to, from time to time, come up with an orchid that they're interested mm -hmm. in, but our big thing with them are providing bromeliads. And uh, I have to say that uh, we've been doing this for a number of years now, and uh, it is for their jungle. And uh, one of my favorite clients is the boa constrictor. And oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I just love that girl. She just wiggles all over the plants, and then they have to get new ones. So, but they don't give them the rare, the, her the rare, she, she is a, a, a her. Uh, they don't give the snake uh, rare bromeliads. Uh, they're more just uh, cropped plants. Uh, they give the rare ones to uh, the little poison arrow dart frogs that are, they have a wonderful collection from uh, Costa Rica. Mm. So now those little babies get the rare ones. Here's one right here that I brought that is a frog-friendly bromeliad. Now the reason that frogs like these little plants <clears throat> is because bromeliads will hold water. That's their nature. They hold water in what we would call a vase or the leaves form a living vase and then uh, they absorb that water as they need it. So it's a nice cool, dank, or not dank, but wet environment. And then each leaf is just a little landing pad for the frog. So they can kind of snuggle down in, in there to hide or come out and um, uh, look around to see if they can find something to eat. So this is a, a little uh, plant that is a species from Costa Rica. And it, it, this is a rare plant. Yeah. Wow. This little guy is uh, full grown. Really? Full grown. Mm hmm so, and how long does it take for this one to be full grown like that? This guy's been in the greenhouse uh, for about 15 years. Wow. And so they're not real fast <laughs> to grow. Uh, whereas I brought something to kind of compare in size. This is considered a miniature. Mm -hmm. And here's a plant that's really a beautiful plant. And it's grown. Right now it's on a piece of lava rock, which is kind of attractive, but this is a baby. Wow. So here's, this guy is full grown. This one? <laughs> I switched on you. <laughs> full grown, and this one's a baby. Now baby, when it becomes full grown, will look kind of like, I have probably these goodies to show you, like this guy. There. Yeah. And that's a magnificent plant. Wow. Uh, so I know you're going to ask me a question about these containers somewhere. Oh along yes, the way. yes, definitely. Because mm -hmm. as we said, they don't require some don't require soil nor to be potted, and right. uh, um, so I, you said that that was a lava rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So uh, it, it just yeah. grows on there? It ta attaches it's just, on it? Yeah, it's just, uh, there's a little hole. Originally, the seedling was started in that tiny hole. Now, eventually, this will outgrow this rock. So if people get plants like this, they, it's a limited amount of time that they'll be able to, you know, have it like that because some of these plants will outgrow that container or that prop. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's good to know if you've got one that's still growing or one that's right. mature already. Right. Well, now, Nancy, is, mm -hmm. is a bromeliad a flower or a plant? Because some don't flower and they look like plants. Oh, no, no, no. They all flower. They all oh. bromeliads flower. And um, what uh, used to be way back in the day, plants were classified or they were named if they were ed edible. Yeah. If you could eat it, people gave it a name. Now, that changed, and uh, as a, I think it was Lineatus came along, and he said, well, that's ridiculous, you, because there's just too many plants in the world to ignore. Mm -hmm. So uh, he set up the system of classifying plants and putting them into different plant families or groups. So happily, I did bring a little guy here that you could see if you could get a close-up of it. Uh, that's gorgeous. That's in bloom. Isn't that pretty? It's gorgeous. Yeah, this, is, yeah. this guy is one of the most popular bromeliads I have. People cannot resist that oh, flower. It's, Women or men, no. that, it's just charming. Those yeah, colors are yeah, so mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. I, I just yeah. love that. And is that full grown? This is full grown. Wow. Now, this paddle is called an inflorescence. Now, many times the paddle is what we will think of as its flower. Here's another example of an inflorescence that's really attractive, this sword plant. It's got a nickname of the sword bromeliad. So, kind of, ta-da. <laughs> <laughs> so, but if I turn it around, you'll see right here the yellow flowers that are coming out. So, we have the inflorescence. This is botany here. Uh -huh. Inflorescence, and then the flowers come from each one of these bracts here. So they all do bloom. Every flower in the bromeliad family will have similarities that make them bromeliads, as opposed to orchids, uh -huh. which every family, I mean, every flower in the orchid family will have similarities. Mm -hmm. So the flowers will not change with environmental um, conditions. They're always constant. So you could grow this plant anywhere in the world and the flowers will always be the same. Whereas uh, the color of the leaves may change or the size of the plant may change. Right. Okay, so the flowers are what make the plant a bromeliad. Ah, ah. ah okay. okay. And um, well now, According to our research, yeah. we, we found that pineapples is a bromeliad. Is that a, a wives' tale <laughs> that it, pineapple is a bromeliad? Because you can eat that. You can eat that, mm -hmm. yes. So it would have been named a long time ago oh, by that guy. Okay. But no, the, that, that is not a wives' tale. It, okay. The pineapple is a bromeliad, and it is one of the few edible varieties oh. in our plant family. And um, uh, pineapple is also a symbol of hospitality. Mm -hmm. I'm not real sure why, but a um, uh, long time ago when I was first getting into bromeliads, there was a woman that was a collector and she was very um, enthusiastic about uh, the bromeliad family. And so her husband, who dearly loved her, uh, made her a, I should have brought it, made her a gold pineapple that mm -hmm. was taken from a, uh, the, a picture, uh, an old botanical. And uh, when she passed away, they presented it to me. So I still have that, uh, wow. that uh, token of hospitality oh, from her. Nice. Yeah, it's yeah. real sweet. I like pineapples yeah, <laughs> for that. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially gold ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, now, um, according another, uh, to the research, they only grow in tropics, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, the climate here is not tropical. So right. tell us about their different habitats. Okay. Um, they'll, all, all plants have ranges. Uh, you'll have some that say, well, like cool, uh, or an intermediate, which is like, will take some cool and some hot. And then you'll have some that are hot. So it depends on where the plant was native to. So these plants are all native to 
South America, Central America, and a little strip of the United States. Oh. So there's quite a range there uh, in um, habitats. So some bromeliads, like this guy right here that we featured, is from Brazil. Right. And uh, this guy right Oh, well, let's see. Well, this one, we'll show this guy again. This one was from originally from Colombia, where it grew native. And then, uh, let me see, I think this guy right here, you can find these growing um, anywhere from Mexico, Central America, and down into Costa Rica. So they have a quite a range. Right. Now, in that range, you have hot, and then from like that real steamy jungle, mm -hmm. that, so that we get that tropical thing, right. with that tropical feel. And they look tropical. Yes. Whether they came mm -hmm. from the tropics or not, they just look tropical. And then you'll have some that are up in the high cloud forest that don't like the heat at all. And they, it's cool and the condors are flying overhead. Right. And so those bromeliads just love it here in the Bay Area. Oh, you know? okay. But then again, some of the other ones, well, actually, they all love it in the Bay Area mm -hmm. because we have that... Uh, that Mediterranean environment. Yes, yes, okay. it's so changeable all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, they're very uh, hardy. Uh, yes, they mm -hmm. are. It's so mm -hmm. easy to care for. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, let us go into another. It was a, a bromelia named after you, Nancy? Okay. And tell us about the circumstance <laughs> about uh, this. Uh, and it's a gorgeous bromeliad, by the oh, way. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am uh, uh, really um, honored to have that uh, um, distinction of having a plant that's named my Nancy Victoria. Uh, and uh, so we had come across a new um, hybrid. And uh, so um, my partner was able to give it a name, and he named it after me. Oh, yeah. okay. So most of them now are in Singapore growing, because we sold a major part of our collection at that time to the government of Singapore for their National Botanic Garden. And so uh, most of the Nancy Victorias are <laughs> growing in Singapore. You have to go there to oh see my them. God, I think I've got one. But in you the have one at the, the one uh, in the which yeah. Um, yeah. they will see uh -huh. in the yeah. show. Yes, uh -huh. yes. fabulous. Yes. And my mom's got one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's got one. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> Well, before we go into our, because we, we want to learn about more about how propagating, yes. mm -hmm. I have to talk about the piece de resistance, um, the little frog that was living in that Iliad mm -hmm. in your nursery. You were so oh, lucky. Oh my God, <laughs> yeah, that you was, get the touch. I was, we were very lucky that mm -hmm. day. And uh, now, do they all uh, grow in, um, do, do the frogs just appear, and, or is that just a specific bromeliad that they grow out of? They, they, they tend to, to d frogs or amphibians mm -hmm. uh, tend to like certain bromeliads. And the one that you saw, mm -hmm. that was definitely her, I'll say it, her home. Uh, so uh, again, going back to the, the plants hold water and then it depends on where they are in the greenhouses. They'll go in almost any of the bromeliads uh, for just like landing pads, but they make their homes in certain ones. Now people who breed frogs uh, try to figure out which ones the frogs like. Uh, right. because that's very important, and they're doing that at the Academy of Science as well, is to find out which frogs, the, uh, I mean, which plants the frogs like the best, because that gives them the chance that maybe they will reproduce oh. and lay their eggs and have their whole life cycle. Now, we do have the frogs um, uh, croaking and, uh, you know, romancing mm. away in the greenhouses, right. and uh, so, and, and have had tadpoles. Wow! Yeah, I know. Amazing. It's, yeah, I know it's a real jungle. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, yeah. it is. Well, it's this is the nursery that time forgot mm -hmm. because of all of ex exotic flowers and just rarities there. Yeah. And uh, um, well, now how do we propagate? Or and oh, let's just talk about this one. We haven't talked about because mm -hmm. look at that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have nor a pot nor soil no. nor and it no. just and you I just know. water it and I it know grows. People, you know, you could. <laughs> Do something with it for uh, Halloween. Uh, this is uh, in the Tillandsia family, which is very popular right now. Um, if you can pan into, oh, I don't know how to hold it against something so you can see uh, one plant right there in my in the palm of my hand. That's one plant. There we go. Oh, that's better. Yeah, 
right there. Now, this plant has a runner onto another plant, onto another plant, onto another plant. So what we have is a chain link of living plants. And so this chain link is making a colony. So here is a colony of plants, thousands of plants. And unfortunately, there's not one in here that's in bloom, but they do have small green flowers. Oh, they get flowers. This is nicknamed Spanish moss, but it's not a moss. It is a bromeliad. Oh, it's got a great name. It's called Tillandsia eusenoides. And um, it has, uh, mosses do not flower. Uh -huh. So if you see a flower, you know it's not a moss. Uh, oh. As I said, this is a colony. Here is another Tillandsia, one plant, and in 20 years, you get a colony. So when I was holding it, and here's one that's in bloom, here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then they're starting to grow on the bottom too. So you, I encourage people not to divide their plants mm -hmm. because when you have a plant like this that takes so long to get into this big clump, and the big clumps I think are just fascinating. They're just beautiful. They're living art. Yes. So uh, you can see that this is on uh, a wire and uh, it's easy just to hang it up and uh, the care for watering it would be well, in the greenhouses, we turn the hoses on and everything just gets sprayed down with a, with a hose. If it's in your home, to have something like this, you have to be cautious of the drip effect. Right. But you just would simply take it to the kitchen sink and put it under the water, get it all wet, let it drip dry, and then hang it up. Oh. But usually, I also recommend a plant like this to be somewhere where um, you can water it well, frequently, because uh, these would need watering twice a week at least. Mm -hmm. So some of the other ones you don't have to water, these ones that hold their water, you can water those maybe every 10 days to two weeks. Mm -hmm. So some need a little bit more care, and other ones you just walk by and say, hi, gorgeous, you know, <laughs> and do like that. OK, uh, we can sometimes yeah. you need to repot your plant. Right. now. In a case like this one, uh, which was uh, given to me by Marissa Peters here in um, uh, Pacifica, and I sold her a long time ago one plant, and then she got a whole colony of them, oh. and then she brought one back, and so I usually I, I just have it out on display, so I thought I'd bring it in and show it. Uh, it's called Fireball, and it also is uh, from Brazil. And so these are full-grown plants. Wow. This one and this one are uh, both in the Nerigelia family. This one's a miniature, this one's um, a mid-size. So you can see that it's got stems here. Yeah. Now if you wanted one plant, you pick the biggest one and then take your scissors, <coughs> excuse me, scissors and just cut it right at the stem and then you're gonna get two. But again, on something like this, I don't recommend it. Uh, I recommend keeping the whole plant together and appreciating the beauty of that colony, that group of plants. But I did bring um, a plant that does need to be repotted. Okay. So we've got our, okay. I think last time I said that, yeah, would you push yes. everything away? That a great, great thing to have is one of these plastic trays that you, uh, you know, just keep, um, under your bed. No. <laughs> I think that's what they're for is to slide under the bed because right. they're real oh, low yes, pro yes. profile. Okay, so we'll, we'll start with the big guy first. All right, see this pot right here? Um, the plant really doesn't need the pot. And I believe there's actually not even any soil in it. I love to show that to people. Oh Look, my that God, doesn't I know. Need that. That's amazing <laughs> yeah, to me, yeah. amazing. The reason mm -hmm. that the plants can do that is because the, the water that they hold and drink in through the leaves, those leaves also, as they drink in the water, drink in the nutrients. So in effect, their roots are doing the work, I mean, their leaves are doing the work of roots. Right. 
So the root system on most bromeliads is going to be really minimal for the size in relationship to the size of the plant. If we do a, some other show and, and talk about terrestrial plants like mm -hmm. these guys behind us and okay. over there, even though I won't mention that they're silk, they look very pretty. <laughs> Yes, but please don't. We'd like to <laughs> don't keep mention the that. <laughs> <laughs> keep the ambiance going the here. The ambiance, yes. <laughs> okay. The arsenal of tools. This is a great tool to have. Uh, it's um, Felco. Another nippers are good to have. It's also nice to keep them in containers that they stay neat. And a good uh, Japanese tool. Uh, this little saw blade is fantastic. I like it because it gets into tight spots. It's a really pretty tool to have. I love going in hardware stores. Oh. <laughs> so, a small plant like this, you don't need a saw. If okay. you had a larger plant, that might come in be handy. So again, down at the base, you look for where the, the crown, the base of your plant is. Uh -huh. And so once you see that, then you can just, well, I'm, let's see. I'm going to do two, and I'm just going to cut it. Ta-da! So, now we've got this, which looks very neat, as opposed to this kind of mess. And uh, so then this plant can be put into a pot, or you could divide it one more time. Mm -hmm. Again, we've got two plants here, one, two, and they each have a base. Now, you want to get the plant trying not to move it too much, down at the very base of the plant here. So that's where you want to make your cut, not higher. If you cut it high, you're going to oh. cut it right off. Oof, don't want to do that. Now, uh, and then you just put it either in another empty pot or you could plant them in, not bark, but you can oh. plant them in, uh, say, peat moss or um, sphagnum moss. You know, you can put oh, it in that. Okay. Another fun thing to do with the plants is, especially with tillandsias, is to mount them or plant them on a stick. So I got a stick out of my, and this is some great wire. I got it because it was uh, um, nice and shiny. I'm going to cut a piece off, and this is just going to be a quick, I'm just going to wrap it around here to make a hook, mm -hmm. okay, all right, a hook. And then I can um, take, where's that little? This one? Um, no, I had a little oh, talantia. Yeah, the talantia. Um. That, well, on a little stick like this, you would not want to take a big talantia like that because it's out of proportion. So there we go. This one. Yeah. Oh, we got this guy over here. So. We want to get the Tillandsia. This is uh, called Stricta. And you could put it in that slingshot center like this. And so then you'd have kind of a prop. Uh, you know, you want to just play with it to make it look like it's natural. And um, always plant your plant upward. Mm -hmm. I saw the dumbest thing the other day on the internet, and they sold these like orbs to put tillandsias in upside down. Ooh. And you cannot grow a plant upside down, it's, especially these small plants. They'll just start to dehydrate. They, they, they have to be up. Oh. So if you are inclined to find one of those internet things and you think the orbs look good, just appreciate them for the orb look. <laughs> and don't put a plant in there upside down. <laughs> so real easy to take a, I like this stuff. You can get it, I believe, in a hardware store or hemp that looks like this. So it's, this has got a little bit of wire in it. It's wrapped with, with paper. And the wire is so fine that as the plant uh, grows, um, it probably will just rust out. And then by that time, we hope that there will be roots that will be holding on. On. Yeah. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. So what we're going to do is just kind of, you just take it, hold it where you think you want it, and then at, literally we're just tying it on. Yeah. And if I tie it on fast enough, we can get on to 
and then, okay. My hand's been doing this for, who, 37 years now? I was counting One. up those years, and One. so they kind of uh, know the pressure all without me. And so uh, having to think too much, ta-da. Isn't that sweet? It is beautiful. Uh -huh. And you notice I didn't put any moss on it. No. Didn't need it. You could put moss on it uh, for window dressing right. to give it more of a, um, a natural look. See, there it is with a little moss growing on it. So, and some people now are putting these in terrariums, so mm. you wouldn't need the hook. You could just kind of plant it. Mm -hmm. I planted uh, one. Um, in an arrangement. Mm -hmm. So the plant, they, we had bromeliads and I think an orchid or something and then tucked the stick down inside <clears throat> the pot. Ta-da! Well, They're beautiful. so versatile because you don't have that soil element. So. I know, mm -hmm. I know. That it's yeah. amazing to me that uh, it doesn't, they don't need any soil, mm -hmm. nor potting, mm -hmm. and they're easy to care for. Yes, they are. Yeah. In general, they are easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to thank Nancy for bringing us show and tell today. Okay, my pleasure. Oh, thank you, Nancy. Always nice to be here, Margarita. Oh, thank you. And next time, uh -huh. uh, we're going to do another show on orchids because we really need to... Uh, actually, uh, some of Mark, uh, that uh, you responded to the questions, they want to thank you because mm -hmm. uh, those orchids are doing fabulously oh, right good. now. Yes. yes, great. All right. So I want to uh, remind everybody that uh, Shell Dance Gardens is open for events, graduations, weddings, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And you must go to the Academy of Science and check out the bromeliads there. They are propagated oh, yeah. by Nancy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, thanks, Nancy, for coming. You're welcome, Margarita. And um, happy gardening, everyone. Definitely. Bye-bye. Okay.